Hi, everyone. Welcome for day four. I can't believe we're already on day four. It's already going pretty quickly. Um, I'm so excited for today. I hope you guys can see me okay. I'm actually, um, if you guys can't tell, I'm not in my normal space today. I'm doing some work um, today at the church, getting ready. We have a moving up ceremony um, for the discipleship group. So that's super exciting. And that's coming up this week. So I'm over here just uh, doing some work today, but um, I wanted to still be able to come on and, and stream and, and chat with you guys. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and make sure everybody's able to get in. So how have you guys been loving this challenge so far? Um, I've been able to see some of your lives. It's so awesome to get to see, you know, what you guys are internalizing about this challenge so far, just getting super excited uh, for everything as it's getting ready to, to post and all the fun things. So um, I'm so glad that you guys are here. You know, one of the things uh, also with Network for the Kingdom, so we are, you know, wanting to grow this group. So if you know somebody who could benefit from being a part of this challenge and being with us, then I would love for you to go ahead and tag them, um, send them that invitation to come go ahead and join us here. Um, like I said, this is the challenge is totally free and um, the more the merrier. So uh, let's chat today. Uh, I am actually let's get let's get started with some prayer and then we will get started and we'll talk about today. Today's going to be an interesting uh, topic. I do have the baby with me. So if you guys hear some, <laughs> well, if you see <laughs> in the corner, uh, if you guys hear some stuff. I'm also, uh, uh, got the baby today. So yeah, we should, we should be okay though. She's got, she's got a movie for right now. Um, so let's go to pray. Father, I just thank you for this challenge. I thank you for all the people who will be impacted by this challenge. I just pray, Lord God, that you will continue to bring those who need to hear this word today uh, and that they would continue to grow into the mindset, Lord, that you have set before them, Lord. You have already set the path before us and we are to put on the mind of Christ. And I pray that um, in this area, we can continue to heal and to grow and to prosper in all the things that you have set before us in Jesus name. Amen. All right, everybody. So let's get started. So today I think might be something that... Um, would really help us to have a better understanding of, I think a lot of times, um, you know, when we talk about this idea of profiting and money and gain, and what does that look like? Uh, a lot of people who have started businesses, you know, a lot of times you start businesses and people are like, well, is this, you know, ministry marketplace? There's this kind of term that's been coined and people throw around ministry marketplace. And then some people say, well, you know, um, I'm, I'm sure you guys have been in various groups where they say, well, you can't sell the gifts. And there's these other kind of things that come up. And I really think it's important to put a distinction between these things. Now, first and foremost, I want to say, you know, you are gifted, right? God has given you gifts. And um, no matter where you are, you know, if you launch a business and your business is supposed to be, you know, for, you know, just not, not specifically for Christian Christians or Christian audience, um, you're still going to show up, right? You're still going to represent and bring the kingdom uh, no matter where you go, no matter what you're doing. So, you know, the gifts of the Holy Spirit don't just turn off, right? Because you're, you know, you're at your desk, right? At your job or you're, you know, in a classroom teaching or, you know, you're a police officer, like whatever it is that you do, your gifts are not just going to turn off, right? So I believe in, you know, relying on God to, to allow us to impact people where we are as we are. Um, and so for a lot of people who've been called into this kind of entrepreneur space, now some people have more of a direct, like, Hey, you know, I am working specifically with Christians. It's, you know, I do have a Christian audience and that's totally okay as well. Right. Uh, I know personally, I would rather hire somebody um, that I know shares my values. Right. Because especially with certain things we're doing, like, for example, if you're writing a book, I want that person to share my values. You're going to know my heart. Right. And when I'm writing something or what, what I, what I want to get across. So there's certain things and, you know, there's, there's nothing wrong with that. Right. Um, but I think that there is definitely a fine line, right? And a lot of people will say, listen, you, know, you can't you can't sell the gifts of the spirit. That's not something that you can do, right? Um, and so I think there's this uh, fine line that we need to definitely be careful. Sorry, guys, give me one sec. <laughs> there we go. Uh, there's definitely this fine line where we need to be careful between... Sorry, folks. Give me one quick second. I told you I got baby today. Give me one quick second. Come on, Papa. You want to come sit? You come sit with us. All right. 
That's okay. There we go, baby girl. She's going to say hi. She's going to join us. Her birthday was the other day. We had her party yesterday. So she's just, uh, she's, she's with me today. All right. Um, so I think there's a fine line between, you know, when we talk about um, selling something and what is how people are impacted by that thing, right? It's one thing. And I think this is where a lot of people, you know, get a lot of, um, they basically, I think a lot of people are impacted in a negative way by this. And it becomes a negative thing in the church is that when you'll hear something like, Hey, you know, if you, if you give this amount in the church, you know, this thing will happen. Um, and I think we have to be careful with some of that, right? Or if, if I do this thing and I sow my money here into this ministry and this thing, then God is going to heal this thing in you. And that's where we need to be careful, okay? We need to make sure that we're not doing those things because that, again, toes a very fine line. Now, the reason I bring this up and this, this concept, this idea of filthy lucre is because what is that? Like, what does that mean? And this, this word comes up in the Bible, filthy lucre. Now, 2 Peter 2, 15 to 17 gives a really good indication of this, where it talks about those who have left the main road and they're directionless, right? They've taken, a, they've taken the way of Balaam son of Beor, the prophet who turned profiteer, a connoisseur of evil, but Balaam was stopped in his wayward tracks. A dumb animal spoke in a human voice and prevented the prophet's craziness. So we see a lot of things happening here, right? Especially those of you who are gifted in the prophetic. You know, like I said, no matter where you go, no matter what you do, you're going to bring you. If God gives you a word for somebody, you know, and, and he's guiding you in your job and what you're doing, you're going to be you no matter what. But it's a different story if that can be bought. So what do I mean by that? Okay. If you're in a situation and let's say, you know, you have a business or you, something's going on and you're asking somebody, Hey, I'm going to change the word that I'm going to give you because I'm afraid it's going to impact, you know, the monetary issue, right? The monetary thing. That's when this becomes dangerous. Good example. And this is what I feel happens at a lot of times, especially within the church body. You see a lot of times, a lot of times pastors may compromise the message because of fear, okay, that the church is not going to tithe or the church is, church is not going to give, give offerings. That is where that becomes dangerous, okay? The word of God needs to be unadulterated meaning we don't change it, right? We're not charging for it. We don't change it. We're not doing those things, okay? That's when it becomes filthy lucre. So Balaam is a good example of somebody who was considered to be a prophet, right? But what did he do? He was asked by, I think it was the king of Moab. Um, the story of Balaam talks about the king of Moab who, you know, wanted to hire him to curse Israel. So he's like, hey, if you... Uh, he, he recognized there was a gift. He recognized those things and said, hey, if you will curse Israel, I will pay you to do it. Okay. That is the problem. That is where it becomes filthy lucre. When there's something, right, that is to be gained that is unjust. Okay. So I usually like to look at things like the Greek Strongs, for example. And again, the Greek Strongs, Strongs 146, when talking about filthy lucre, says given to greedy of filthy lucre. So something that has to do with giving in a way that is unjust, right? Or, or can manipulate or change God's word. Now, I don't know about you guys, but how many of you, you know, are with me and you can say like, maybe you've been in a situation like that. You've heard that. Maybe you've asked those questions before. Um, maybe you've seen it within your own, within a church that you've been to. Right. And I think the church has a lot of healing to do in this area. And a lot of people maybe don't have trust in some ways because of situations like this. Now, this is where one of the things that we're going to present to you in the book that we believe is a really good solution for some of this is going to be, you know, firstly, you know, churches to be more transparent when it comes to, you know, finances and how these things are being spent. But secondly, you know, it, and this is not to put down any pastor, any leader in a church. I don't want you to hear me saying that. But what I am saying is that the word of God needs to be kept in purity, right? The word of God should not be changed, okay, so that it can tickle or, you know, itch the ears of those who are listening because of fear of not receiving 
you know, money, because at the end of the day, the church needs to function, right? It needs to pay the light bills, needs to pay a mortgage. I mean, it needs to, it needs to do things. Okay. People need to be paid. There's a whole process to this. However, at the end of the day, if the message is being changed, or if there are bribes, essentially, that's sort of like bribing, right? Oh, if you say this, or if you stop talking about this thing, or stop teaching on this issue, we'll keep coming to your church. We'll keep paying you. We'll keep doing that. And that is, is in a sense, filthy lucre because the word of God is being changed and manipulated and distorted in such a way, right? That it prevents the true unadulterated word to come forward. So one of the things that we, we present within the book is we truly believe that one of the things that can help this is if you have leaders and pastors, especially that are able to generate income right? And, and, and help with meeting their basic needs apart from that of the church. There will be less of that temptation, right? Now, I'm not going to get into all the details today of what we talk about in the book around that, but this might be an issue that, you know, maybe you're thinking of, you know, maybe God's called you to open a business and you're like, man, I know that I'm called to open a business and to serve the church and to do this and to do that. But there's this like, Thing where it's like, okay, do I charge for this? Do I not charge for this? What is what is of the gifts? What is now? You know, what what is that line, right? Like, where what what do I do here? And um, that's one of the things we want to explore deeper and a little bit more further with you as we go through this process, as we go through the challenge, and as we uncover more about ourselves. Okay, so um, a lot of people will say, again, I'll give you an example. When I meet with clients, I pray with my clients. I'm not charging my clients to pray with me, but I pray with my clients, right? That doesn't mean that you're selling the gifts. That doesn't mean that that's filthy lucre, right? I'm not saying, hey, if you pay me, then I'll, I'll make sure I pray for you. I'll pray for that, that thing to happen, right? That is not what's happening in this case. But in this case, I'm going to bring myself, right? I'm going to bring who I am. And a lot of times, even when I'm looking at a book or I'm thinking of a strategy, God gives me those strategies. He helps me come up with things that I, I honestly could not come up with in my own, my own <laughs> minds, right? Um, so, so I want you guys to consider those things and consider the balance of those things, especially those of you who are called into the marketplace, you know, but you have this thing of ministry as well, right? People will be impacted. They will grow. They will, you know, because at the end of the day, even God giving you that business, that's God's business, right? God has given, given you that business and he's gifted you to complete the, the tasks assigned to that business. So I wanted to, uh, <laughs> Lizzie says, filthy what? So filthy lucre, it comes up in the Bible, comes up a handful of times. And I know, uh, Lizzie, you like words, so that might be one for you to, to, to look up a little, a little, do a little research. Um, but this thing comes up, this concept, this idea, okay? So when we think of that, we want to make sure that it's not of greedy gain, it's not of that, and we're not manipulating or changing, right, the word that we receive when we're ministering to others or when we're talking or working with others, okay? There's a fine difference between, hey, I'm not going to, you know, if God told me something about this, situation, I want to make sure I'm healed, Okay, so I say it in a way that is not going to hurt you, right? But but it's a problem if I release that word or I say that thing to you or I do these things and I'm not doing it from a place of honesty, right? I'm not doing it from a place, I'm doing it in a way because I'm afraid, okay, that you won't pay me, right? Or that you won't. So that is where it becomes an issue. So, you know, we are all for empowering leaders, especially church leaders, to start businesses, to do those things, to be able to move into a place of self-sufficiency, okay? So you can preach the unadulterated word of God and you don't have to worry, okay, about if somebody in the somebody in the congregation gets offended or somebody feels it, right? And I'm not telling you guys go up there and go hurting everybody. It's not what I'm saying. I'm all for the healing part of this, okay? But we've seen it. We've seen it happen over and over and over again, okay? There's a lot of churches that end up in this situation, okay? So at the end of the day, we don't want that to be the case. We want God to bless our finances. And the way that we receive those finances yeah. makes a huge difference, right? So we want to be in a position with the Lord where we're receiving and there's not shame attached to or tied to how or what we've received, right? Because now how much worse would it be to receive that with shame and then try to go and offer that to God, right? That's not what we want. 
we want to act in integrity, right? We want to act in such a way that it's like, hey, I'm not ashamed to bring myself. I'm not ashamed to come and to bring my knowledge and my skills and, and support you and do those things and 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 and, and open up this business and, and have, let the Lord bless that business and do all of that. That's wonderful. But we need to also make sure that we're not doing something, right? For, for for greedy gain in that sense, okay? We're not changing the word of God for gain. We're not changing or manipulating because at the end of the day, and there's a lot of what happens, when that word gets changed, okay, it's being done because it's conforming to the people. Now, when you're focused in a body, in a congregation, in a church, <laughs> sorry guys, when your focus becomes solely about um, the money aspect, right? And you're constantly focused on the money, the money, the money, the money, we forget about the people, okay? At the end of the day, those who are called, especially to church leadership, right? You are called to lead the people. You are called to lead them. And not everybody wants to be led or likes to be led, right? But that is what you are called to do. So if, especially if you know that you're called to leadership, that word that you give, right, has to come from a place of purity. It has to come from a pure place. It has to come from, hey, over everything, I don't have a Bible with me, but if I did, I would hold it up like this and say, over everything, the word of God trumps every single thing. It is the word of God. There is nothing else that is above it, right? It is this word, this inspired word. And this gives me everything that I need for life and godliness, right? So, so when I understand that and I can conceptualize that, now I want to act on that. So from acting on that, now I know, okay, everything that I do needs to be colored through that lens and through a healed heart. Because if your heart is healed, right, you're not going to go around using the word to hurt others. So truly, at the end of the day, creating wealth and acting and living in abundance really looks like a church body that is healthy, that is functioning, right? And, and that is thriving, okay? That is God's image and God's design. Now I'm gonna share just a little, one little other thing with you and then I'm gonna wrap us up actually for today. Um, you know, we had, yesterday we had my daughter, as I was saying, her first birthday party and we, it did not go as planned. There were some things, you know, that happened. It didn't go as planned. And I'm sure you guys know if you've thrown, if you've thrown parties, um, you know, everything was a little bit behind. There's a little bit, something's happening, but at the end of the party, we had to kind of hurry up and finish up with the rental hall and, and finish up everything that we were doing over there. And at the end of the party, I had a lot of church friends and family that were there, everybody. And I didn't ask them to do this. Every single person got up and they just started like pitching in. I was like, Hey, the party's over. Like you guys can go everybody we had that place cleaned out and done in like a half hour okay they all stood up and then that shows a healthy body right that shows i didn't ask them to do that they did that from their heart they just came they're like hey i want to help you i want to serve you and we're here let's do it and everybody was pitching in right those are those are my mothers in the faith right my sisters and brothers in the faith like these are people who become your family it's relationship so at the end of the day churches, we, we focus, right? We need to focus on the people, serving the people, loving the people. And it, and sometimes that, that looks like correction. Sometimes that looks like, Hey, you might be doing this, but here's what the word of God says. And I'm not going to change or manipulate the word of God or my message because I am in fear that you will stop coming or that you will stop tithing that's when it becomes a problem or it becomes a situation of bribing. So that's one of the things that we truly want to see heal in the church and to help in the church. And we want to empower the leaders to be able to move forward at that. So I'm going to wrap up with this guys. Uh, I just want you guys to know, um, we are, you know, we're going to continue to dive into some of these concepts. I know today we kind of hit you with a little more of like a teaching one. Um, but I hope that it, it blessed you and it helped you to kind of think about some of these things, navigate some of these things. And especially those who, again, are called to this sort of ministry marketplace, just pray and ask God, like, God, how do you want this to be? Right? Like what, what, how do I package this? How do I design this so that I could be at peace and at balance 
and that I will not have to change your word, right? Because I want to make a sale or because of this. So how can I do both? And it's possible to do both. And God will give you the strategy always. So let me pray for you guys. And I'm going to let you guys go again. Um, keep an eye out for that pre-order, that pre-sale link. You can just put your email and sign up to know once it's on for pre-sale, you will be the first to find out about it. And um, like I said, all of the proceeds that we're making from the book sales are going to support um, survivors of sex trafficking. So uh, we want to help out with that cause. So let me pray for you guys and I'm going to let you go. Thank you, Father, for this amazing day. Thank you for each of these beautiful people that are here. As we continue going in this challenge, we continue growing, we continue learning with you, God. Let us uh, speak your word from a place of integrity and of truth without fear of retaliation from others or from the enemy, Lord. And let us come from a position, God, that we're doing things in such a way that you truly will bless the finances, that you will truly bring what needs to be brought into the storehouse, Father God, and in our businesses and in our ministries, Lord. Give us that balance, Lord God, so that we can act and walk in integrity, Lord God, and we will not go in the ways of Balaam, but that we will be uh, we will be those who will hear on that day when we see you. Well done, my good and faithful servant. We love you, God, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, guys. Thank you guys so much for joining me on today. I know it was a little bit a little bit slightly chaotic, but when you have a one-year-old, this is how it goes, and you guys know that you've been with me for a while uh, I always let her jump up and she, you know, she is, she is my number one priority. Love you guys always, but my baby is definitely my priority. And, um, she's over here just taking her step. She's walking now, which is cool, but, uh, it's also a lot more active for mom over here. So <laughs> have an awesome day guys. Love you guys so much. Uh, hope to see you guys tomorrow. Bye.